Um, thank you, Emily. I, <clears throat> as you were speaking, I thought about the, the calls that we receive at the Department of Education from parents and students about what they're experiencing and how uh, difficult this is. Uh, I heard the term relentless and I felt so alone. And we hear that and it's so powerful. Uh, it's something that we really need to work on uh, every single day. And that's really my job uh, at the Department of Education. I'm really honored to be here today, uh, Senator Harkin, and thank you uh, everyone for the opportunity. I would really like to focus on three areas and be as brief as I can. We talked about the definition of bullying and how challenging that is that we don't have perhaps a federal definition, although we do appreciate at the stopbullying.gov site that we do have and follow a definition that helps us in our work. And that is that bullying is really unwanted, aggressive behavior among school-aged children that involves a real or perceived power imbalance. The behavior is repeated. I think about relentless, the repeated things, Emily, that you talked about, and has the potential to be repeated over time. Bullying includes actions like making threats, spreading rumors, and often we think that's not serious, but it's very serious. Attacking someone physically or verbally, and exclusion. Very often, it begins with exclusion. In elementary school, we see that as one of the strategies to help to make kids feel left out. Again, and I think you mentioned this, uh, Senator Harkin, the researcher and really father of bullying prevention, Dan Oveas, from Norway says bullying is peer abuse. And I think we need to really pay attention to the fact that this is an abusive behavior. It's an act of violence. What we can do and what we know uh, that is encouraging to us is that we really have a guideline around some best practices. I'd just like to just have us hear those. There are really 10 that guide us. One in a school that we need to focus on the social environment of the school. And that means addressing the climate, the climate in which our kids come there every day to learn. Number two is to assess the nature and extent of bullying. Often we don't ask, we say, we don't have bullying here, but unless we're really surveying our students, and now we know that we need to ask parents and families and staff as well so that we have data to make good decisions. We need to get a support from adults in the environment. Everybody needs to be engaged in this. It's not something that one teacher can do or one staff member. It's not uh, something that happens with just a few, but we need everybody engaged. There also needs to be a group that shepherds the work. If we're going to address bullying, we need those who are passionate, have it in their heart to do this, and that should include parents and students, as well as community. It's so critical, and I heard this earlier, to train all of the adults in the school around bullying prevention, getting everybody to join. When I hear Emily's story, I think we all need to join so that we can understand what this is, the, the harm that's, that's caused. We need to create and enforce very specific rules to address bullying, make sure that we're addressing this in classrooms, increase our supervision, and intervene consistently and appropriately. 70% of teachers in a survey we know believe that they intervened almost always, while students, 25% of students believe that the teachers intervened almost always. So there's a real discrepancy in our perceptions. And then it all has to continue over time. What we're doing in Iowa very quickly is that we have been leaders in bullying prevention since 2004, even before our law was passed in 2007. We intentionally have two nationally certified trainers around bullying prevention and intervention in every area education agency and in with our Safe and Supportive Schools grant, uh, there's someone who's assigned to each one of those schools to provide that. We've hosted ICN sessions, workshops, and webinars, continue to do that. We have ongoing guidance from our department attorney, Carol Greta. And again, through the grant, 
We have provided this last spring our first uh, full day intake and investigator training uh, across the state of Iowa. We had 400 educators participate in that. We will continue that work. We know that when somebody tells you that something's happened, we need to pay attention to that. We are partnering with Iowa State Extension and uh, outreach around in youth engagement for each one of our grant schools. So we have youth uh, teams that are really there to help us really to understand and know uh, what we can do to address bullying and to improve the climate overall. That's really what that's about. We've also partnered with the Iowa Pride Network in a safe school certification program, which includes both an audit of the Iowa bullying law so that schools are meeting the components of the law, and then elements for addressing bullying more comprehensively in each of our schools. In the fall, we will launch at the Department of Education a refined data collection system from every school in the state of Iowa, which will give us much more information about all those categories that are in our Iowa law of students who, who may be uh, bullied. And some co just a, one consideration in closing for thinking about the future. All areas that support student learning, we call that learning supports in Iowa, and they need to receive the same level of priority in legislation and funding as reading math, and other academics. School climate has a significant impact on the child and student's ability to learn. It's as important to know if a student is safe as it is to know his or her achievement scores. Mm -hmm. Thank you.